Oh gosh, today we're taking you all the way to Timbuktu and we're talking about a black Muslim scholar whose life is about to mesmerize you. This is the African history class. Today we're taking you all the way to Timbuktu. Now when we talk about Timbuktu, we're talking about the citadel of learning right here in Africa. And of course, we gained a lot of prominence as one of the first universities in the world when we are the very first one known as the Timbuktu University. My brother, my sister, today we are looking at this great son of the land, Ahmad Baba Al Timbukti. Ahmed Baba Al Timbukti. In fact, his full name was a whole sentence. And if you may permit me, I would like to mention his full name. <laughs> he was called in full Abu Al Abbas Ahmad ibn Ahmad ibn Ahmad ibn Umar ibn Muhammad Akit al Tukuri al Musufi al Timbukti. I'm sure you want me to repeat that. That is the full name. Abu Al Abbas Ahmad ibn Ahmad ibn Ahmad ibn Umar ibn Muhammad Akit al Tikuri al Masufi al Timbukti. You want to hear it again? I know. Abu Al Abbas Ahmad ibn Ahmad ibn Ahmad ibn Umar ibn Muhammad Akit al Tikuri al Masufi al Timbukti. But in this class, we will simply call him Ahmad Baba Ibn Timbukti or Al Timbukti. My brother, my sister, this is a great scholar whose story rolls right now. It will last only about five minutes. Hear this. Ahmed Baba Al Timbukti was born on October 26, in 1556, that's in the 16th century. He was born in Arawani. Arawani is spelled A-R-A-O-U-A-N-E. Arawani, Arawani. Now today it's called Arawan. It's a small village in the Malian part of the Sahara Desert, lying about 244 kilometers away from Timbuktu. My brother, my sister, this is Arawani, Arawani. His father was a Berber by name Sanhaja Beba Agit, my brother, my sister. And the interesting thing is yet to come. His father was officially known as Ahmed ibn al Hajj, Ahmad ibn Umar ibn Muhammad Agit. But people simply called him uh, Sanhaja Beba Agit, my brother, my sister. Listen to this interesting thing. Hey. As a little child, his father was already a very studious man. He wanted his son to also be studious like him. So he carried him all the way, my brother, my sister, to the beautiful city of Timbuktu. And when he got to Timbuktu, he started teaching him what he was already learning in school. And then he got him close to the greatest Muslim scholar at the time by name Muhammad Bagayogo. Repeat after me, Muhammad Bagayogo. Muhammad Bagayogo, my brother, my sister, was also known as Muhammad Bagayu. He was a very powerful Muslim scholar who was a walking encyclopedia. My brother, my sister, there was a rumor in the days that he slept for only two minutes and the rest of the time he never visited his bed. He was either sitting down reading and falling asleep or some such thing. But on his own bed, people could count how many times they saw him lying on that. And there was only a maximum of two minutes on the bed. He was a very studious man. Muhammad Bagayogo, a.k.a. Muhammad Bagayu. Hear this now. Now, he studied so hard as a little child and got so studious. He got so scholarly. Hey, he started writing at a very early age. He wrote books 
when he was only a little boy. Hey, then there was an infection of the area. Yes, in 1594, my brother, my sister, 1594, how old was our hero in 1694? My brother, my sister, he was only about 38 years. Am I right? 38 years. He was deported all the way to Morocco over accusations of sedition. Sedition, my brother, my sister, after the Moroccan invasion of Songhai, where he remained in Fez. Now, the king at the time in Morocco was called Ahmed al Mansur. Ahmed al Mansur died, and then his successor, Zaidan al Nasr, decided that all exiles could return to their motherlands if they wanted. And then our hero for today, Baba, decided that he would leave, and he decided to leave. Fez in Morocco and returned to Timbuktu, the place of his birth, my brother, my sister, back there in Arawani on April 22, 1608, after spending 14 years in exile under the King Ahmed al Mansur. My brother, my sister, whilst he was in Morocco, he wrote several books about great heroes and heroines in the area. He wrote the biography of Muhammad Abdul Karim Al Magali. Yes, Muhammad Abdul Karim Al Magali, my brother, my sister. He was a great scholar and he was responsible for much of the traditional religious law of the area. My brother, my sister. He wrote over 400 different books talking about Islam. He dedicated a lot of the books in fighting against slavery, which was so rife in the days. Interestingly, our hero for today, Ahmed Baba al Timbukti, was not necessarily fighting slavery. He condemned Muslims who were using the story of Ham in the Quran and in the Bible to enslave black people. But listen to the controversy here. He was not necessarily against slavery. He was only against Muslims enslaving other Muslims, whether black or white. Listen attentively. He fought against slavery. He didn't like it when people used the story of Ham to enslave black people. But he necessarily did not fight slavery in all his entirety. He only fought Muslims who enslaved other Muslims. For him, it was okay for Muslims to um, enslave Christians. It was okay for Muslims to enslave the so-called infidels or kafirs. But a Muslim enslaving another Muslim for him was not right. He left behind so many books that are so historical today. Some of them are in the form of manuscripts even up to this date. Producer, see if you can find me a manuscript. Yes, a writing of our hero for today, Ahmed Baba Al Timbukti. He wrote in Arabic and he wrote on a parchment paper. That is what I am looking at right now. Now you can see it. My producer does not understand Arabic. That is why the other text has been turned upside down. She's not able to tell me that, oh, you know, this one has been turned upside down. But what? Ten. The first one is okay, but the second one has been turned upside down because it's an Arabic writing. My brother, my sister, that is his writing. In his handwriting, his own handwriting, he wrote our history. Today, we thank you so much for what you did. We thank you for standing against racism in one way or the other. We thank you for your scholarliness. Should I say it again? Scholarliness. We thank you so much. We thank you, Ahmed Baba Al Timbukti, a great Muslim who spent all his life writing the story of his land. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My brother, my sister. He also was quite controversial when he said in another contradicting idea 
discussed in the articles that he wrote. One of them is slavery in Africa. My brother, my sister, he wrote about the fact that he and also classified Christians, Jewish, etc., etc. My brother, my sister, as he said, there was no difference between unbelievers regardless of their different religious beliefs of Christianity and Persian and Jews. It doesn't matter. As long as you do not believe in Islam, you are a disbeliever and it was okay to enslave you. Today we remember Baba Ahmed al Timbukti. He did what he could. May his body, mind, and soul rest in perfect peace as we remember him today. We remember you. And we say thank you so much. We appreciate you. We remember this great man. He died on the 22nd of April. 1627 at the age of 70. He died in Timbuktu in Mali. My brother, my sister, he was a proud Sunni Muslim. He was a very powerful man who wrote a lot. He was a teacher, a jurist, a scholar, an Arabic grammarian. My brother, my sister, he was such a powerful son. And he was taught by the great scholar, Muhammad Bakayoko, a.k.a. Muhammad Bakayu. Today we remember you, O scholar.